stepping here to an angle, okay? I'm also turning my body, boom, right? That's the defense, and then this is literally gonna rake down here, okay? That's a good one, so there's that option. If he comes across swing, same thing, here. Now, for this, depends on what you wanna do, because now if I put the arm in play, right, and I just defend here, now that's better than nothing if I have no, no weapons, but here, if this is a blade, this could happen still. Somebody's trying to punch you, okay? don't necessarily um, switch hands if it's just a punch, it's back fist, the other way. Boom, that's fine, you can do this, boom, and then move in, tap, okay? But now we're talking to Blake. This is much easier. This is too risky, okay? We want to close the distance, that's what we want to do, okay? If you have this as a defensive option, you would have a mount for this. This, see, I, I just not mounted. I'm keeping it in a kind of a trainer position, but this would actually be on my belt, and this can pull off and deploy very easily. So, basically, this little thumb break, this is the thumb break, and then basically, this just comes right out. Okay? If you're wearing Molly gear, like in the military, you can also hook it up here as well. A lot of guys, you can also, you can also customize rigs to have it however you want it to be, okay? Deploy it from behind if you want, you know, you can put it wherever you want to put it on your head. Anyways, so what we're gonna do, so now if I'm gonna here, this is the defense here. Okay? I'd rather you do this than this. Keep the arm out of play. We're knife fighting, we're blade fighting, so you keep that other arm in for the most part. So here, boom, and then the same slash. Right down. Like this. But here, you're hacking, you're hacking. Alright? So you're getting so again? Here, bang. Now you can have this up just as a countermeasure, but I don't want you really trying to block it. If you have an option and your arm gets cut, it's better than your neck getting cut. Okay, so that's that's your, your better option, right? So, but I mostly want to deal with this. Because you can practice both ways. Go ahead, swing. I'd rather do this. Boom. Or this. Alright? So again, here, and stop here with this, and then slice. All right, next up. Uh, again, the reason I'm having you him attack with the blade is because you're not using this if somebody's just trying to fight you with, you know, push you and shove you and punch you. You're not using a tomahawk. A tomahawk is for dealing with situations where you're in multiple engagement. There's 10 guys coming at you. Lethal force is already authorized. Well, this also works good for close quarters. So if you're in a hallway, if you're somewhere where you can't, let's say, I carry my firearm on one side, okay? I might carry my tomahawk so I can deploy with the other hand. It depends on what you want to do, as this could be my secondary weapon. If I have no firearm, this becomes my primary weapon, and a small blade becomes my secondary weapon. Okay? Just step off. Alright, another application. Thanks, bro. Another application for this, like the juggernaut was saying, is great in a hallway, close quarters. You can be pinned. Your rifle can be pinned. You can be being pushed. And you can't access your rifle and bring your barrel up, okay? This is a great place to have your tomahawk where it's right here, you can deploy your tomahawk, boom! 
all right? Buys yourself room to fight back to your long gun. All right, let's talk about the long blade, the cap knife, for a minute. Now, keep in mind, when you're dealing with the cap knife, this is a this is a larger blade, okay? This is a short sword. This has been used since King David times, okay? This has a lot of value to it. It doesn't have as much, you can't use as much blocking. This is, everything you do with this is, is deadly lethal force. So, what you're dealing with, though, is you have the range of a blade, okay? You could fight, think about this, this is like a short sword. You could fight an army with this, okay? With a short, tiny knife. Bad guys in China, because now guns are outlawed, they're carrying knives, and bad guys are taking out 50 to 100 people with a knife. So that's a very scary thing in the hands of a bad guy, but in the hands of a defender, okay, if you're in a, live in an outlaw state where you're not allowed to carry a gun, um, or the restrictions or whatever, uh, whatever, you carry a small knife for defense. If your family is attacked, then you can use it to defend yourself. But this is a large knife, so you have to also consider the legalities of that. The same angles of cutting apply here, here, slashing, all right? Now, if the hands are, you have the appendages here, right? You have fighting stance. You have here, right? You have, you have arteries, all right, that you can cut, all right? These are game enders, okay? You also have, what you don't have with a tomahawk, you have a stab point, okay? So you have low, medium, high, you have high, medium, low, high, medium, low, okay? And that's the same with the small knife as with this blade, okay? Um, again, this is used a lot of, if, for guys in the military, when you're in a military environment, this is a great tool because it's not just a defensive weapon, it's also a tool for cutting and doing all kinds of survival techniques. You know, making a campfire, you can do that with this knife. There's all different kinds of options. So, um, this one, um, if the guy is coming at you, in this situation, the same swing attack like I had before coming at you, you're cutting, you're slicing, you can also stab. This is the stabbing action you have with this, okay? Um, if, if he's swinging, right, you can kind of use this as a defensive tool, right, but now you also can cut, okay? Um, with the tomahawk, one thing that you don't have with this, you do have the flat of the blade. Sometimes if you swing, you know, you could, if he swings, I could do this, and this, if this blade is not sharp, I might use this, this might be a, a less lethal, and I can, I can disarm the blade that way. But the bottom line is, if somebody's coming at you with a tomahawk or a gun or something, everything is lethal. So you don't want to be messing with that. It's, all, it's the business end, right? So we talked about yesterday. So with the tomahawk, one, one option that's nice about the tomahawk is you do have the option. Let's say this person attacking you is, he's attacking you because he doesn't realize you're the good guy. Let's say you're in a situation where you go in and all of a sudden somebody's attacking you. You don't want to kill him, okay? So you can actually just shut him down by striking here to the chest, okay? The flat of the blade is less lethal, okay? However, it becomes lethal very easily. Even if you're trying to use this to keep a guy away from you, it's very easy for him to turn a little bit or your angle will turn a little bit. So anytime you have this out, you better have use of authorization to be able to defend yourself to the point of taking that force. Look at that. You heard the juggernaut talk about there's death, deadly force that you got with this tomahawk. You got the off switch. Like I said earlier, if you're pinned against the wall, you can easy shift, right? Same thing he was talking about earlier with center line punching, okay? This is a center line punch with the tomahawk. Center line punch, center line, center line, right? Center line punch with the tomahawk, right? Same thing, when you turn it less lethal force, you're just turning your hand, turning your hand and coming like this, okay? It's a switch. This is why you need to know your weapon system. You also have a pommel on the back that is used for breaking glass. This does not work as well. It can, you can but you're gonna get stuck, okay? That's why there is a pry bar on the end like this, right? That's made to access glass. This is another tool for cutting open windshields. When Humvees flip over in the water and your buddy's drowning next to you, you can cut a windshield open with this, all right? These are safety tools, all right? These are tools that are imperative when you're breaching, okay? You can throw a string on this, all right? And use this as a grappling hook. And now you don't have to carry that motherfucker. You can carry just one of these. Throw that into the field. Now you can pull Constantina. 
All right, let's do this. Train with the tomahawk. The juggernaut's got good shit coming out. You guys need to watch these videos, learn how to use this tool properly. Teamwork. We're talking about teamwork. We're talking about family, right? We want to survive the fight. We want to come home to our families, our wives, our kids, right? Then you need to learn how to fight. Fight to survive, a fierce will to win, right? This is a multi-tool, like the juggernaut was saying. Lots of use, it actually has a stone and a strop on it, so you can maintain this blade in the field. This is something you would put on a rucksack. Now, if you didn't have a tomahawk, you can wear it like a short sword. You can wear it in the scout position. It's a great position for a long blade to be deployed. It's behind the small of the back. Because why? Because we carry the method of the front one, our operator blade is in the front. Operator blades stay in the front all the time. Always wear it. Become religious with it. Learn it. Train it. It's your method. This will keep you alive. It's been passed on from many war fighters. This is a strategy. Okay? Use it and you'll stay alive. Okay? This goes on your rucksack. This can also go on the small of your back or the front if you ain't wearing one of these. But if this is all you can afford, it might be your only option, all right? I love this thing in the bush, all right? I've made hundreds of fires for my family with this. I have cut down trees. I have built bush survival shelters. I have lived in the field for months and end with this knife. For years, I have been in the field with this knife. This is the juggernaut, it's not mine. Well, okay, here's, here's our big knife. You know that we're using the camp knife? This one's mine. You see me holding out the juggernauts. Uh, I served seven years in the Army Infantry. Some of it was done at Walter Reed after I got medevac. I got injured in Iraq in 2006. I was active duty from 2000 to 2003. I was the 3rd ID, 2-9 Infantry uh, in Korea. Uh, two other units. And uh, after that, I, I got out and I broke a vertebrae in 2003. And uh, in that time, I started a company with my brother because we're from New York. So we, we felt it was very personal what the Muslim jihadists had done on our grounds, desecrated our land, and killed our people. You know, and we, I was already in. I was in in 2000. 9-11 happened in 2001. So I was with Third ID at the time. And I'll tell you that story some other time. Everybody's got a 9-11 story. You should ask them sometime. I got a good score to tell about that thing. All right? All right, so anyways, some of the reasons I'm doing this is because, you know, oh, well, anyways, I got called back into the Army shortly after, even though I had a broken vertebrae. And being a war fighter, you carry lots of equipment. And I was a sergeant. And anyways, we had lots of gear, OK? I think it was like 178 pounds on my body, and then my rucksack was heavy. And I, we were running on a mission. I grabbed my rucksack and I herniated like seven discs in my back and then they ended up having a medevac because it was, one of them was pushing on my spinal cord, right? So anyway, I got lucky. Whereas a lot of dudes, you know, get injured over there, they lose limbs and I was paralyzed for nine months. I learned how to walk again. That was like 12 years ago. So I'm just kind of getting back into the training mode myself because, you know, once a war fighter, always a war fighter. And the truth is, uh, the Muslim jihad threat is real. If you've ever seen the Command Sergeant Major and talk about it on any of our videos on the Defender to Freedom series 2017, you'll, you'll, you'll hear him talk about how it's the real threat that faces civilization today. Okay, so... You know, you know, you've heard me talk about weapons of opportunity. If you've ever seen any of my videos, uh, you've seen me talk about some of these things, right? Things we adopt from other countries uh, that we go to war with. Every every time we fight a, a country, we learn things. So lessons learned, right? You know, and in the in a conflict, you you tend to lose friends. You know, people die, right? So from equipment malfunctions, all right, from all sorts of problems. I mean, I got tons of stories where gear, dudes have told me stories about their gear failing them and killed their buddy, okay? 
you know, fire and heat is, is very common. You get mortars dropped near you and it's explosive, it's high, it's high energy, it's heat, okay? And most of what the gear that's issued these days is tacked with the nylon, which melts all over your body, if you didn't know that. And uh, so one of the things that's a workaround if you have to wear the uniform is you base layer your stuff with wool, okay? If you use marinol wool, it's very soft, and instead of using polypropylene, you use marinol wool, okay? That goes for your socks too, okay? So some of the things you're gonna hear me talk about is things that aren't just my own theories, but these are like passed on from other war fighters. Like I said, war fighting skills, you can you can be a natural fighter, but soldiering's an inherited thing that's passed on from generation to generation with the lessons learned sitting around sergeant time listening to your sergeants go on from the stories they were told and, and teaching you the tricks that they taught you you know my NCOs were rangers they were special forces guys they were you know I had one of my sar NCOs was in the movie Black Hawk Down but not in the movie but actually you know Mogan Dishu okay uh, I've had platoon sergeants that were you know very high speed all right, I've had NC, uh, command, uh, COs that were Delta Force and, and first sergeants that were Spec Ops. So, you know, we train other countries with those guys, but we also train our guys with that, that material. So, we, uh, everybody who's been in the infantry has been trained by high-speed operators. So, veterans going all the way back, I talk a lot of times about you need to find a veteran to train with, okay, if, you, if you're not schooled by the military on the AR, you should get a black gun and, and start learning how to use it to defend your home because everyone in America should have a black gun before they all look like New York's bullshit, all right? New York's a great example of a terrible state to live in. Sorry, New Yorkers, all right? I'm, I'm actually coming from the Pacific Northwest here. I'm not trying to offend you, but you can ride your motorcycle here year round and some of the things I'm gonna talk about is being a civilian now, but still having that battle mindset, okay? So I carry a tomahawk, okay? I've carried this tomahawk with me, all right? I've carried this knife with me all over the United States, all right, for two years on the road all over the United States, and this as well, all right? This is some of the things I wanna teach you guys is about tomahawk and how to deploy a tomahawk. Like I said, some of the guys that watch these videos might be the last time they see something like this. They might have this shit, but they don't have necessarily the know-how or the method of how to deploy and use these things in a battle mindset or in, in conjunction. Just how to place things is a learned lesson, okay? So this is kind of like a sergeant time lesson in civilian attire, okay? All right, so you've heard me talk about this. This also works for camping, you know, if you're, if you're in the motorcycle scene and you go camping a lot, this is a way you can carry a knife, all right? It's not concealed, right? It's still accessible, and actually I could put this underneath my vest or underneath my, you know, a, a shirt, okay? You wouldn't see this, but you would want to loosen this up because one of your first moves is a non-lethal move you can strike with the handle of this, okay? You got this, is all non-lethal, okay? So you could deploy, boom, and strike like this. At the same time, a deployment, you could come straight out with the tomahawk too, into a, into a fighting position. We've already talked about this as a support hand so that you don't come back and hit yourself with the spike in your face or in your arm, right? You guys all see that, right? It doesn't come back and hit you, all right? And if you need to assist it, Okay, forward, you got that assist hand. Going off center line theory, what we've talked about with our basics, all right? Center punches, all right? Center line punches. This is your support hand. Doesn't get in front because you obviously can lob your shit off, okay? All right? So again, there's non-lethal options right from the deployment of this. If you're wearing a full tactical kit, okay? This is the same way you could rock this. This, this is on your first line gear, this is on your this is on your belt system right here, holding your pants up, okay? You don't ever have to take this off, okay? Let's look at that, right? See that? It's right on there, right? And that's my belt buckle. My belt buckle is designed to keep that from pulling out, all right, from slipping, 
just like a cobra buckle, all right, I can set my position. And when I deploy this, it's deployed, it doesn't move, sits in a fixed position, right? Now my battle belt goes right over this, all right? This, all right, would slide right into the outer battle belt, not onto the inner belt anymore. Unless you're doing planes clothes work. There's no reason to not ever have a tomahawk. This can go into your gear, even under a suit jacket, if I needed to, okay? And you needed to totally conceal this. You see what I'm saying? All right? This is something that, I'm gonna show you something. All right? But in order to do that, you would wanna, you know, to get that same deployability, all right? You'd wanna, now we're talking play, plain clothes details. All right, maybe you're going through a city, right? You're camping on your motorcycle, right? And you don't want everybody knowing your business. Now you don't see that shit, right? Tomahawk is legal because the blade, the blade, see, it's still deployable, right? Still got my deployability. Still got non-lethal options with the top. All right, you got strikes. You can strike down the center line. All right, you also still can deploy with the hook. You got all the options that you would with a knife, only you have more. Like you can pop holes in the tires, okay? Five gallon gas cans, all right? It's a lot easier to do this with the tomahawk, all right? With that hook, with that, with that spike in the back, this is also, we've talked about an off switch button, right? You get in a situation, your weapon's pinned, okay? You can't deploy that. You might have to deploy this, use that to free yourself from the first man, fight back to your long gun, right? Okay? All right, so let me put that back in there. So you can actually put that away like this. Now, nobody really knows, all right? And I'm camping again. There's no reason this is any problem because again, how long is that? It's very short. But if you've seen it, our Dan Winkler blades, the operator knife, it tapers, tapers all the way around, right? Tapers all the way around. You've all seen our knives, right? But it's very short, maybe like four inches, five inches, okay? The tomahawk as well, they go off of blade sides. If you look up, and this is not a dagger because a dagger is considered double-sided blade. This is one side, so you can actually baton, do bushcraft stuff with this still. This is great for skinning game in the field. So all these have purposes beyond just killing people, okay? These are like tools that you would use all the time, all right, for everything in the field, all right? These are tools that you could carry all the time. So again, this is the short version of the tomahawk, okay? Daniel Winkler, right? This is mine, you've seen, you've seen the Juggernauts, all right? His is the black handled one that the Rangers carry. This was made for SEAL Team 6 guys to be deployed like, see this little bump? To be like a pistol grip. So when you're punching, it actually feels like the same kind of grip that you would have with your pistol, right? You would have with this Tomahawk. It's also tapers, tapers all the way down, it's full tang, okay? Very nice, very nice piece, right? But it's it's a lot smaller. So I'm gonna have a bigger version, the tribal version, which is about this much bigger, coming to me soon, okay? And I'll show you guys that, but again, this is how big this blade is, okay? This blade is mini, all right? But you've seen me destroy butternut squashes, which butternut squashes are very hard, even with a very nice knife, okay? But this is game prep, again. You can do game prep, this is, Good way to split things and baton things. You can do this with this, all right? You could do, you could fire wood prep with this, all right? You can make snares with this, just like this. This is great for all that fine tooling that you would do on snares. What you're gonna see is talk about snares in the future, all right? Again, I don't do this, I don't get paid for this. This is because I love the soldiers that are deploying out overseas right now and I want them to have the best tools at their disposal for eliminating ISIS, all right, and defending against their lives and coming home safely, all right, specifically so, for, to get this information out to the war fighters, whether they're abroad or at home, recovering, or whatever. So, all right, so on to the knife. So, 
you see my tomahawk. So this, this works in your full battle rattle or in concealed clothing carry, all right? Same way you go through your, your outer belt though if you were wearing all your tactical stuff, all right? This would be something that you would put outside on your, on your battle belt, all right? Through the outside. But again, you could, this is on your strong side carry, strong side carry, right? All right? And this is, hold on, before I move on, all right, come back onto this again. You see my, you see my deployment system that I set up? You see me do this on the live version, all right, on the Juggernauts Tomahawk, okay? The difference is with mine and his, okay, is those strings that I got on mine, this is uh, for spear fishing. So the, the test line of this is like 600 pound test string, okay? So this is also, I can use this for snares, okay? It hangs very balanced, very streamlined, okay? Everything, you know, but if I was sleeping, the reason I could sleep like this, this is old mountain man method for carrying this. This is uh, based on history. Okay, you can look up mountain men. They had a small knife like this. They had a tomahawk. They had a large knife like this. Okay, for for the exact reasons I'm talking about. Okay, there's different benefits for each piece. Okay, so again, they work together. Neither one of them's better than the other. They're all different tools. They all have different strengths and weaknesses. Okay, like again, this isn't the knife you would necessarily want to use for fine detail cutting. Okay, but when it comes to bushcraft things, all right, you put a shack together really quick with this, okay? You can put anything together with this really quick. All right, so back onto this. You want to have it deployable. You want to adjust it so that it's at the good length of your body, so it's natural like if you were drawing your pistol. So it sits on the top of your belt, right? With just a little bit of slack. That little slack gives you that first strike if you want to come out and strike with the end of your tomahawk, okay? So that gives you that. And that is also, that, that could go straight low like this, or it can be almost like a hook. Okay, you can boom right up under the jaw. Okay, working back. And if, if that's all you need it for, then that's, I mean, that might be enough. Or if you can't get to your rifle, there might be a reason you have to do that, okay? So, there's a thousand reasons. Again, this is going to be better for cutting cargo now. Okay, one strike, boom, versus a knife is cut, 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 and you have to saw it. You saw an action, why would you have to do that? Say you're lanyard and to something, you need to cut that off, okay? One chop is gonna cut that. There's cargo nuts everywhere in, in the war zone, okay? So again, all right, the looseness here is also so that you have, you have some room, all right? But when you're laying down at night, you can put this right alongside you with this still on your neck, okay? You can sleep in your sleeping bag like this, all right? And in the complete darkness, you know where everything is, okay? It's there. You know, most guys I knew slept in their pants, okay? This belly, everything can stay in place. You still have your weapons deployable at a moment's notice in the darkness without the need of flashlights, okay? So mountain men had things like this, and then the, the lanyard in part is also so that if you're wearing heavier garments like wintertime clothing up in the mountains and the highlands, right? You'd want to have the adjustability, okay, to be able to, like right now, this is underneath my clothes. But if I had on armor, I would need a lot more length, right? So these are things to think about. And if you just attach this to your armor, now when you're sleeping, this is on your armor, okay? You want this on your person, okay? You want to think of this as one of your, some of your best friends, just like your rifle. They're, their, they're your rifle's best friends, right? Okay, so again, how would you carry this? You see my configuration that I got going on. I have an architect type belt, okay? It's an architect rigger belt, all right? That you can actually tie off to, have anchor points, okay? If you were on a ship, like a helicopter you could anchor in or a back of the truck hanging out shooting, you'd have some kind of a rigger's belt that you could attach. So this is kind of like my two-in-one system. I have a rigger's belt right here, right? That's very streamlined by Architect. I really love these belts. I don't even know if they make them anymore, okay? And if you don't know the brand, that's what they look like. All right? I mean, like some kind of bones of a frog or something. You know? Or a lizard, I don't know. Anyways. So, 
This is your normal drop leg holster that a, a pistol will go on that I configured for this large knife. All right, so burned holes with a, with a, a hot awl. All right, you heat it up because this is tactical nylon. Right, on these knives we also have, all right, there's a sharpening stone inside these camp knives with a leather strap on them so you can care for taking out nicks and stuff in the field, okay? But I suggest getting yourself some ceramic rods to protect your very nice knife. This knife, can, this knife I think goes for like 600 bucks, but again, it's like a firearm. If you're a war fighter, it's a short sword. It carries a lot of duties in the field, okay? So this is something that in history, mountain men would put these on the cross draw, okay? They would cross draw this. Again, going to their strong side, okay? The way I have this holster configured for it is I can also wear this, if I took this belt out, okay? I can wear this thing, I can drop it on a drop leg holster type system right here, but it would be on my strong side again if I wanted to, but I'm a tom I like wearing my tomahawk, okay? So, how I choose to wear this, all right? For one, you can just, if you're taking this out of your rucksack and you need to build something, you can just throw this thing over your shoulder, okay? All right, and now you've got your whole setup and then you can, when you're done, you can tie this back down to your rucksack very easily with a carabiner or, you know, just unlooping the belt, okay? And, and setting it back on your ruck because we want to tie everything down, right? Again, I got the string that you would get from spear fishing, all right? And these are the drop lag pieces that came with the, the holster system. Okay, so this is also another way if I decided I was having all my kit on, I actually needed to secure this knife better. I can wear this in the, in the camp configuration or a scout configuration like this. Right? It goes across the back. enough that I could go around my armor if I needed to, okay? Alright, so this is this is just a couple options for this large camp knife, but again, this is something you would carry more on your rucksack, right? It's not something necessarily you would have every single day with you unless, you know, something may have happened to your tomahawk and this is your option now, okay? While you're looking for a new one, right? Okay? So again, with the, with the big knife, the same thing is, all right, if you're fighting with that, this is your support hand. This is coming back, all right? You know, this is, these are assist cuts, all right? These are assist drives, okay? You know, this is not lobbing your fingers off, all right? Because, you know, this knife is very, I don't know if you're gonna see this, but, all right, this knife will, you know, tear some stuff up pretty good. It's pretty, pretty legit for making spikes, stakes, doing any kind of feather work for, for, for camp type crafts. Okay, this is it's a very good tool for that. All right, making punchy type sticks or booby traps. Okay, you can do it up real quick with this. All right, snares or trips. All right, stuff to that nature. This is a tool that will help you do that quickly little more fine work all right all these can be used for butchering animals So, 
I call them my tactical tully, all right? You know, whatever the Arabic word is, I don't give a fuck, okay? All right, so you can put something in this, wrap it, right? And immediately you got yourself a bludgeon, right? All right, but well, we're not doing that show today, so what we're doing is, this is awesome, this is the towel of a thousand uses, all right? So. Put this to a triangle like this, all right? Every every war fighter should have at least one of these all the time on them. When we go to other countries and it's an old soldier thing that when you fight an enemy, you adopt practices of that enemy. So this is one of those practices we adopted in the U.S. Army anywhere online. You know, they sell them. This one's Fox Tactical, I want one. which is a U.S. tech, you know, a U.S. tech company, Fox Tactical. So I mean, this is 100% cotton, okay? So this is a lot of plenty of uses for this. You can make char cloth out of this. You can use this in your water filtration when you're getting water out of a puddle, okay? If you need to have uh, to cool off, okay? You can wet this thing off and just wear this thing wet, keep you nice and cool, okay? All right, another thing that I like to use this thing as, all right, is a hood, or concealment, rather. This is where editing is, you know. So I make a hood, and all you young buck can see, I am carrying the method, all right? Cost. Okay, so I tie this like this. There's lots of ways to do this. Okay, this thing you can wrap around your head like a ninja mask if you want. All right, but that's not what I'm doing. So what I'm doing is I'm making a hoodie. All right, so I'm making me a hoodie. So I'll put this on like this. That like there. Bam. Okay. All right. So just talking about survival again. Okay, you lose a lot of heat in your armpit areas, your head, your groin areas, okay? So my hands, a lot of times, I keep my hands covered, okay? I keep a hood, all right? I have a hood. This is all leather, all right? It's not gonna burn up like tactical nylon. I have cotton, 
with a base layer. This is cotton, all right? This is silk, okay? My base layer that I'm wearing underneath here is wool, all right? Marino wool, super soft Marino wool, all right? So this is the concealable Daniel Winkler tomahawk that I've been carrying for about two and a half years, okay? So this excels in lots of things in the field. Usually I always have this on me. It goes like this. And I slide this right in here and it just stays out of my stays out of my space. You know? And so I got my hood. And like I said, you got this move. First move, bam! That's a jawbreaker. Alright, that's a non-lethal bash. Alright. So I got my cut, which is leather which also acts as a barrier like armor. My pants are Kevlar with knee pads in them. They're motorcycle pants. They move very nice, okay? I got a cane. Remember I talked about always have a weapon? This is what I'm talking about. This is just me camping. You know, this is all stuff that comes with me camping. You know, when I've been traveling around the United States for the last two and a half years, I've been seeing six to nine Muslim men, no women, and they've been camping at every single campgrounds across America. To me, this looks like staging. So, you know, when I camp, you can see my site. It's just simple, man. I'm just hanging out. I got war machine. You know, we'll go on a little tour, right? You know, everything, everything we want, everything to have purpose. You know, we're not going excessive. You know, I got my knives, I got my, I got sleeping bags. All this fits in one duffel bag on the war machine, you know. So we're gonna go into gear layouts in the, in the times coming. Look, this is, this is my, as it gets colder, I will put on wool long underwear. I have a leather jacket that will become more of a layer system. I have titanium gear. I use canvas and leather. And titanium for uh, all my my metal is titanium because it's actually antimicrobacterial. It won't retain odors or smells. It's easy to clean in the field versus a camelback bladder is not. Bladders break. They're hard to clean in the field. This stuff is something that you can carry with you all the time. This is insulated. You can't boil this, but if you make oatmeal in it, it'll keep your oatmeal warm. Okay or if you eat soup in the field, okay? When you're in the military, you gotta buy your own stuff if you want good shit, okay? So some of you young kids coming up as war fighters, think your gear through, okay? These are titanium pieces, okay? This sheds ounces, all right? The things that I carry with me are valuable, They're valuable to me. They have multiple uses. I have awls, I have titanium awls that I can do leather crafts or or push pieces into uh, big openings so I can sew using 550 cord, which this is 550 cord, uh, which has seven strands inside it, which any soldier will tell you 550 cord we use for everything, okay? Have ways to tie your stuff down, okay? All my stuff is tied down with lanyards, okay? Because when, when it comes time to move, Nothing's gonna get lost. You know, I got I got my keys. I have a can opener, which is geared towards opening cans that, you know, if I go to the grocery store and I get a can of soup right there, I can use this, okay? I have a compass, all right? So I know where I'm at all the time, all right? I, I got a whistle. So if I can't scream, I can use. Big, you guys recording? Yeah. Hey guys, it's Demo. As you can see, for the past two days, we've been training for tomorrow, because you never know what's coming. We were unprepared on 9-11. They, they got us off guard, they hit us, and they hit us hard. Every day is a train day, because you're learning something new every day. I'm with a pack of guys now that understands why we're doing this. I was in the mix on 9-11. I saw the second tower come down. Wasn't fun, wasn't easy, and the not knowing was the worst thing ever. We got hit, like I said, we got hit hard. I lost a lot of friends, members of the services, 
the, the uh, fire department. I had a couple guys I knew down there. We lost a lot of people. Let's not make it again. If you see something, say something. I mean, it's very key. You might not like Krav Maga. You might take karate. You might not, not, um, you might like guns and no knives. Well, at least you know something to defend you or defend others when it comes to. Again, we're laxed again. The government, I don't know. We got a defense for ourselves. And our title says it all. Citizen response. They're secondary. You're primary. You got to do what you got to do to help catch there. And if you don't do what you don't do, just to survive, you can't answer any questions secondary people that want to ask. So on that note, God bless you guys, people that lost people on 9-11. I was there, I understand, my heart's come up to you. The uh, anniversary's coming up in a couple of days. So keep keen, get your stuff together. You got our number, you got our website. We're local, but we can come to you. Citizen response. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks, bro. That is rock on sound. All right, let's do this. I think.